Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek with the favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income Roundtable podcast, we have almost none of the usual suspects, but we got a few of the usual suspects. We've got Landon, AI, the aquatic investor, Harris. Landon, how are you? Doing well, Mark. How about you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration's fine. I got to tell you, uh, 118 is hot. Like, there's just no no other way to like describe it. It's just it's brutal. Hot. There are other ways. It just wouldn't be appropriate to say on the podcast. But yes, that's hot. Yeah, that's hot. <laughs> Taria putting in the reps. Harris, Taria, how are you? Are you guys back in San Jose or are you still in Atlanta? We're back in San Jose. You're back. We were just nice. there uh, last week. Nice. And Scott Todd, the brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Pulse is still normal. Respiration is fine. Uh, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. Tate, oh, how are yeah. things in Vegas? Ah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. Sorry, I'm flustered. I got, I was just on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's what happened when you, just, when you just join. So yeah. uh, we have an interesting topic today. It was, it was a question I think we got uh, a couple weeks ago, and I'm pretty sure we've never discussed this, although after hundreds of podcasts, maybe we have. I don't remember. But the question was, is there any benefit to being a realtor in the land business? So I guess that's a two-part question. If you're, a real, if you're already a realtor, is it a benefit? And number two, if you're not a realtor, should you become a realtor? And is there a benefit to running your land business as a realtor? I I think we all have strong opinions on this, but let's see. Let's start with Landon, AI Harris. Landon, what do you think? So I don't think you need to be a realtor uh, in this business. I think there's so much... Uh, one that we learn in this business that you, it just doesn't require the need to have a real estate license. I think um, the only benefit that I could see uh, for this business, and I guess of being a realtor, and maybe you can jump on MLS, but if I say that, I mean, you can get a realtor to do that for you. So there's plenty of other people out there to do it. Now, like I said, I, I just don't think there's a necessary benefit to being a realtor than, you know, than not. So I don't really have a lot to say on it, but I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. yeah, I think you brought up a really good point. I just love to go around the group. When is the last time you sold a property on the MLS? Uh, Landon, MLS. Never. Never. Taria? Not a not land, no. No. Tate. Uh I I was just looking and I, I don't know. I it's not been recent. Scott. It's been a while, man. And and like you can get these people that uh will list for like ninety nine dollars per property for a flat oh. rate and it's it ne it never comes out the way that they, in my experience, doesn't come out the way that, that those promoters say it will. Because by being in the MLS, those leads go to them, <laughs> and then right. they have to redirect them back to you. And it's never seamless. It's never fast. It's you know you're you're dealing with old leads, and you, you know, it, I don't know. There's better, faster ways to do it. I think. Yeah, I mean, if I guess if you had a million dollar ranch, you know, you could talk like big numbers. Maybe there'd be a land broker that put on the MLS and it might get some traction. But for the smaller transactions that we do, I mean, it, it doesn't really make any sense. So that's just a black hole into your into your marketing right there. See, there's your marketing tip of the week. Don't list on the MLS. It's not really effective. Uh so, Taria, to be a realtor or not to be a realtor, that is the question in the land business. 
Um, so I have my real estate license in Georgia, and I would say not to be a real estate agent um, because I'm held to certain standards that someone who's not a real estate agent is held to. So it can be a little more restrictive if you are licensed than if you aren't. You have a, a, a few more liberties when you aren't licensed. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wonder if uh, Tate wants to play devil's advocate. Uh, I do not because uh, <laughs> I'm not a realtor. I don't work with realtors. I can sell my land really well. And I don't know. I mean, I, no, that's just my short answer is no, you don't need to be a realtor and you don't need to get your license and no, it, rather than focus on that, focus on the fundamentals. Oh, so, yeah, exactly. Scott Todd, do you want the last word on this? Look, look, man, I'm I'm all about uh, like education and you know all, all this stuff. But as everybody said, I'm going to say no. And as to, as Taria said, I think that when you're operating in that uh, world, there's too many restrictions. I mean, for for example. Um, you know, if you're a realtor and you're, and I don't know the exact rule, but basically if you're a realtor and you're going to mail, let, let's say I'm a realtor in Florida and I'm going to mail offer letters for like land in Florida, then I have to disclose on that offer letter that I'm a realtor. It's like, like this entire legal disclaimer. And I don't know if you have to disclose it in other states. I don't think that you do unless you're licensed in that state. So now all of a sudden I gotta I gotta make it more complex. And I think that even in my advertising, I have to disclose when I go to sell that property, like um, you know, uh realtor owned or something like that. You have to have like full transparency that you're a realtor when you're dealing with that, the general public, so that that they know maybe that you have the upper hand or you have not <laughs> you have knowledge that they don't have. <laughs> So in that case, I'm going to pass. Yeah. So Tria's nodding her head. Tria, do you want to add on to that? He's right. He's Expand. right. You have to disclose um, everything. And then unfortunately, it, it can set you up for liability. But um, if, if I was trying to operate within the same state that I'm licensed, so it does not apply when I um, operate outside of that state. I'm not licensed in any of the states that we do business. So it is. It's full disclosure. Um, and then it takes one person to feel like you misled or, or anything. And then, you know, there's liability that they can come after you. So it's just easier not to be licensed unless you really plan on dealing with residential land or like you said, million dollar ranches somewhere. Um, other than that, what we do, not necessary at all. Yeah, no. And I remember, I mean, this is back in 2000, 2001, I remember meeting with a, an attorney, a real estate attorney. I, I specifically asked the question, you know, while I'm buying and selling the, these parcels of the land, is it going to benefit me to get my realtor's license? And for all the reasons everyone has said, he said, absolutely not. It's like, you don't want to be a fiduciary. You have all these, you know, responsibilities and restrictions to do. He's like, you're just buying it for sale by owner and selling it for sale by owner. Why complicate it? And that hasn't changed at all. So this could be one of the quickest roundtable topics of all time. It could be a record, dear listener. It's a gift. You go straight to another podcast. Maybe it's a, a little longer, a little meatier. But that being said, Landon's not off the hook this week <laughs> for his tip of the week. A website, a resource, a resource, a book, something else actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go and improve their businesses and improve their lives. But before Landon gives that tip, we have to give out a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing safely quickly, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa, who's done it thousands of times. And I know what you're thinking, the investment. It ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed you're going to make back that money 180 days or less. Just show us your work. Learn more, go to landgeek.com 
forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. All right, Landon, the aquatic investor Harris, what is your tip of the week? Well, uh, so this week, um, I've say I've been past few weeks, I've been doing a lot of research um, and, and the research I'm looking at basically marketing and just ways to improve marketing. And I think one of the things that most of us are learning, and then we know it, um, is that most people pull up ads, marketing, websites, everything. It's all kind of done mobile uh, or not all, but a lot of it's done on mobile devices. So one of the things I was really trying to figure out were things that you could do uh, to improve just your marketing uh, for um, phones, basically. And so um, I put a link in the chat. Um, basically, it gives uh, this chat or this, um, excuse me, this link gives a few different ways to uh, think about how you're marketing, uh, different ways to boost uh, your social media, um, things like creating videos, which we do, um, and certain ways to write uh, your templates uh, that so that they are easily seen um, on the phone and it doesn't distract. So um, just a quick little link, um, and it's just basically 10 strategies to engage your audience on their phone. I, I like it. I even like the the headline. I love those listicles. 10 strategies. You gotta click on it. What there's 10? I can think of five. Yeah. What are the other five? Uh, Jay, what do you think? Are you yeah. checking it out? Uh I think that you know, any time you can spend improving your marketing is time well spent. And Landon's absolutely right. People are not on their computers when they're shopping. They're doing it from their couch while watching TV on their cell phone or their iPad. So optimizing your marketing for mobile devices is key. Something everybody should be doing and test your ads too. Like that, that that's the 11th thing on this list is post your ad and then go look at it on a, on a cell phone, right? Like if you're not doing that, you have no idea what your potential customers are even experiencing. So good stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's a, we should actually do a whole podcast on SMS marketing because you got to be very careful with that, but I think it could be a, a, a really great strategy. Um, I think it's interesting. Like the very top of this, I thought, I thought it was going to be about stop door, stop doom scrolling 10, <laughs> 10 strategies to engage your audience on their phones. And I'm like, wait, how do they know I'm doom scrolling all the time? <laughs> <laughs> I actually I don't do scroll, but uh I I have found a way to make my phone less addicting. And it's pretty miserable, but I highly recommend it. Uh Tate, do you know what I'm talking about? No, I just think it's funny that you said, yeah, this is gonna this is gonna make you, you know, less addicted to your phone, but it's absolutely <laughs> miserable. You're gonna hate every minute of it. But you're, it's you're at do it. You should do it. It's like ah, giving up sugar, ah, jumping in cold bodies of water, ah, <laughs> bone broth. Ah, Mark's new tip. Yeah. Ah, I'm not sure I want to know about it because I'm all about improving my quality of life, Mark. Look, the, the bone broth popsicle is a thing. For not sure. for me, it's not. It's not for me. You guys get ready. I'm bringing them to San Antonio. That's all right. They won't make it in the market. So hot. I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going around Yeti. I'll have them ready. Yeah. The whole, the whole Langy community, like we're all going to fast and just have bone broth for the whole boot camp in San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, 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 right on you. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're not watching the video, Sharia is actually pointing to her cup, drinking bone broth. All right. So, Tate, this tip is not for you. And for those of you that actually want joy in life, this is not the best tip either. But if you have a real problem with your your cell phone, this is a great tip. And I think it's. I, I mean, I'm sure you can do this on, on Android, but on the iPhone, if you click three times on the right, the button, it will go to. Uh, a color um, setting. So you go one, two, three, and then it asks you for accessibility shortcuts, your color filter, 
And so you can make it black and white. And when you make your phone black and white, it's really boring to look at. I will say it's just, you don't even want to look at it. It's just, you know, unless you absolutely need to get the information on the phone, it makes it so more like just, it's just not engaging at all. It's literally black and white. And uh, I've been playing with it. So the times when I'm not using my phone and, you know, you're, you're in the elevator, you're doing something. And then I, I would take my phone out for that little liminal moment. And then I see it's black and white. I'm like, I don't even want to look at this. Like it's, it's fine. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do something like, oh, I don't know. Think maybe talk to a stranger. I don't know. Something crazy like that. Oh, so, but try it out. And then I will say that when you do go back to color, it's pretty engaging. Like, it's like, oh, what a joy to go back to color. So for the, for the people out there that, I guess, there, I mean, would there anyone who listening to this actually remember a black and white TV? I, I had one. I had one. You had a black and white TV? Oh, yeah. I, I had, had one. one. Yeah. So I guess it's possible. I mean, I don't, I'm sure I had one, right? We're the same age. Yeah. yeah. I had to. Yeah. But then remember how great it was when I went to color? Oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never stop. Great. Yeah. For the for those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about, go watch The Wizard of Oz because it starts in black and white and then uses color. So tremendous. All right. Well, um, I want to thank the listeners. Just remind you that the only way that I'm going to be able to rope these fellow land geekers to continue coming on the podcast, if you do three little favors, follow, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review. Support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich. And uh, that way you can, you know, brag to your friends and family. You got a signed copy or not. Whatever you want to do. But it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good giveaway, I think. Maybe we'll, we'll, maybe we'll switch it up here soon. But um, are we good, Tate? We're good. Tria? Landon. All good. All good. Scott. All good. All right. Let's do this. One, two, three. Let's let let freedom, freedom, freedom ring. 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 All right. Thanks, everybody. So uh, I went swimming the other day. And I thought, oh, this will be, you know, by the way, it's like 112. I thought, <laughs> oh, you know, it's, this, the pool is going to be so refreshing. It was not. It was like bath water. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. No thanks. I used to train in that. And you're sweating. It's hot. It's sweating. We had a few guys pass out. I mean, it was was dangerous. It's dangerous. Like, yeah. How difficult is it? I mean, how much? How many bags of ice would you need to cool down a pool? How many gallons? (laughs) Now that you could, right? Sorry, I I don't know if you could. (laughs) I, is, is Chat GPT have the answer to this? If you, if your pool is this, has this many gallons, you're going to need this much ice to, to have it reduced by this much. It's probably just better to not go swimming, right? Like, <laughs> we don't swim like until the afternoon because midday it's just too hot. Like, to be in the water in the direct light, the sunlight is just not even fun. Yeah. No, it's not. I, I used to joke to people like, oh, the summers, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, but you know, it's it's always 80 degrees in the pool. It's not. And the summer. Degrees. It's brutal. Not summer. It's like 100 degrees in the pool. Yeah, I got but some I buddies that coach out there. It's not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, not They're telling me it's hot. It's fixed in the morning. It's bad. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's definitely high 80s, low 90s at six in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All Sorry, right. The water's tough. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll uh I'll be seeing y'all on Friday. Boot camp. For the mm-hmm. people listening to this, you've already had you've already had boot camp, but it's gonna be amazing. And hopefully you thought it was already amazing. So we'll talk about that. All right. Thanks everybody. Bye. All right. See ya. 
Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.